Wunderschönen guten Tag und herzlich willkommen bei Crowd Gaming. Es gibt zu so ziemlich jedem Genre auf der Welt schon ein MMO, aber wenn Petroglyph ein MMO RTS macht, dann könnte so eine, das ein oder andere Höchstchen feucht werden. Warum das so ist, das ist ganz einfach, weil Petroglyph so ziemlich jedes RTS gemacht hat, das unter der Kategorie genial, cool oder muss man gespielt haben läuft. Wir reden natürlich von End of Nations. Die volle Entwicklerpräsentation von End of Nations seht ihr jetzt bei Crowd Gaming. Welcome, this is End of Nations. The demo we're going to give you today is based off of a cooperative instance. Um, historically, at conferences, we've been showing a lot of the PvP for End of Nations. Uh, what we're about to show you today is our PvE. Um, as some of you know or don't know, uh, we are an MMO RTS. At our core, we are a very good strategy game, uh, but we do have some massive multiplayer componentry, and I think that that'll be shown off really well here today. Um, Right now, the view that you're looking at, well, first, let's start with kind of giving you a brief synopsis of, of End of Nations if you're not familiar with the, with the story. Uh, End of Nations takes place about 50 years in the future. Uh, there's been an economic, like a global economic meltdown. Uh, and of course, the bankers and the rich financial institutions try to bail the world out, and they form something called the Order of Nations. Uh, at first, Order of Nations is great for maintaining sort of, you know, uh, peace and security in the world. But as with, you know, lots of things, they're corrupt. And you know, you are playing someone who's part of a faction that's rising up to kind of take them out of power. Uh, there are two factions in this game, Liberation Front and Shadow Revolution. Uh, each faction has two different commander classes that you can play as. And why that's important is that those four classes basically are different archetypes that map well to different play styles. Uh, for the Liberation Front, you've got the Spartan and the Patriot. Uh, Spartan units are very heavy hitting, frontal assault, you know, big tanks. Uh, the Patriot has more support units. You can repair your, you know, your, your colleagues. Uh, you can, you know, you can lay down, you know, lots of heavy fire with artillery barrages. Shadow Revolution is very hit and run, stealth, high damage, you know, and you know, a little bit, you know, a little bit lighter on the armor, but you know, definitely more speed. Um, today we're going to be showing you Liberation Front, uh, and this map actually is a four-player map, uh, and we've got a nice mixture of Patriot and Spartan here. Mike just went into the armory, and what this is, this is actually kind of at its, at its meat, one of the, 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 the best parts of the game is being able to customize your units. Um, not only cosmetically, I, th I think Mike's got the zebra skin there, but um, you can actually, you can mod out your units, and we'll talk about that in a second. But right now, one of the things that sets us apart is, unlike you know, traditional RTS where you plop down a base and just start spewing out units, End of Nations actually allows you to customize the loadout that you want to take into the game. Uh, You've got, you've got three different company options. Here, Mike's using Charlie Company, but he could just as easily switch to Alpha or Bravo. Uh, and why this is cool is because you definitely want to have a tactical advantage and you want to be able to meet any sort of challenge you'd face in the game by preempting it with a well-built company. Uh, in this case, Mike's actually got a nice heavy tank, so if we were playing the game, Mike would probably have this company, and oh, you can switch companies in the middle of gameplay, which is very effective, good, good strategy. Um, Mike's showing you, some, these are some heavy tanks. I would probably use these guys, if I, if I capture a point, I'd, I'd hunker them down there to hold off you know, people who are trying to take it. Uh, or you know, Mike and I could be going in as a four player group and Mike could say, Bryce, I need some anti-air. Or, you know, and then he, you know, I could switch to a, a company that was made up of anti-air units. So this is one of our infantry units. These guys are what you'd use for you know, running in, capturing a point, and I'll get to that when we're actually in the gameplay, and, uh, and you know, taking, taking do you know, territorial dominance on the map. Um, and Mike's going through the different skins. We have over 200 different skins that further allow you to customize your units. I think it's a digital camo there. Um, and so, what you know, once we're actually through the armory, this is where you would actually set your hero units. Um, this company that Mike has loaded out, and each company has the allowance for a hero unit. Uh, this guy's called the Judge. They all have their own custom units. I mean, all of the you know the the, the geometries are custom. The voiceover is custom. Uh, everything is custom about them. And again, each one of these uh, hero units is actually tailored for your playstyle. So you know, if you decide, hey, I want to have you know the, the nice heavy loadout, I'd probably you know I'd probably stick the judge in there because you know he's he's nice and heavy. Um, 
here's the judge. So uh, what else do we have here? So um, you can see in the loadout below, Mike has his hero unit. He has his basic, you know, his, his, his tactical units. And then here we've also got some tactical structures. Uh, these are, you, you, you drop them into the battle, they stay there until they're destroyed, or, you know, if you delete them for some reason. But uh, these guys are, you know, these are, again, usually placed to defend a certain point. The other thing that is Mike's loadout is his commander abilities. So these are abilities that you actually can unlock through gameplay as you level up. Uh, there we go. Uh, and right now we currently have 20 levels. So, you know, almost in sort of, you know, that's sort of the persistent part of this game, the, the, the MMO component. Uh, here Mike has, has leveled, we're all level 10 for the purposes of this demo, but he's got, you know, he's put a lot of points into his units. So he's unlocked more powerful <coughs> units. Uh, he could just as easily have unlocked more powerful tactical structures or more commander abilities. So, anyways, once you hit level 20, you can also further kind of refine how you play these classes by picking a class specialization. Uh, anyways, and the nice thing about this is it's a guilt-free system, meaning if you specialize in certain things and you realize that this just isn't how I play or this isn't right for me, you can just wipe this and start over anytime you want. We won't do it today because it obviously takes a while to reset it, but um, what's that? Some mods. mods are another way to further customize your play and your and your and your units. Um, as you can see, Mike has a bunch of mods here. Some of these are for sale, like you know, with the in-game currency. Um, right there is a blue one, which we're using the traditional MMO color convention of you know green for rare, uh, blue for more rare, you know, and, and purple for epic. Uh, and you you would actually get these as drops at the end of a, a match. You're awarded them for winning. So, and that's both in PvE and PvP. So, uh, those go here. I think hero units, hero units and higher level units actually will add mod slots. So again, as you get higher level and you train stuff, uh, you'll be able to actually make yourself more powerful. So, uh, let's go ahead and, are you ready to hop in, guys? Just adding some mods, getting ready. Rock on. Yeah, so you can modify every individual unit. With, yes. With different mods, to so speed them up, give them more armor, yep. give them more, you know, lock range. <laughs> So the other thing, and Mike's absolutely right, the other thing is you can also do, you can actually mod your buildings as well. So like the gun turrets that you can place, no matter, no matter how you do it, you could actually mod at the company level. So you could actually have the same units, you know, the same types of units in one company and have them completely health and armor, swap companies for the same exact units, but those guys could be all modded for damage, right? It just depends on how the match is going. So we're gonna hop into a battle here and this is called Full Bore. This is our first PvE map that we're showing to the public. Um, actually, it's a very, very cool thing. Normally, we have four people driving. So uh, if you see Francis running around frantically, that's because he's taking the place of four people. So. Yes. The ON is headed in our direction. Do your best to hold out until all the supplies have been extracted. So as we're loading out, you can see Mike has one more chance to change out his company. Uh, there is a time cost to swapping out a company in battle, so it's kind of good to say, all right, I'm just going to go with Alpha Company or Bravo, whatever, and just jump into the game. Uh, here's, here's Mike's group. So he just get, he gets deployed here, and... Actually, I'm coming in. I'm still... I'm still you're still getting deployed, right? Uh, we have landing zones. So one, there are different territorial pieces that you can capture in the game. Uh, one of those is landing zones. This one you start with, but there's another on the map. If you want to basically deploy to a different place, you would set that as your spawn point. Um, some of the other points of interest on the map and things that you actually have to capture to win, um, we've got both resource points and victory points. So unlike a traditional RTS, um, it, rather than having to build a base, the map sort of is your goal. Uh, for victory points, we don't have these little stars represent who captured what. and Obviously, nobody's captured anything yet. Uh, oh, yeah, well, I can go show some of the spots. Yeah, let's go ahead and, so, let's go grab a victory point real quick. So, what, what happens is, we'll take control of that. And why this is PvE is the order of, the order of nations is trying to take these points back as you capture them. So, these four players are, you know, one yeah, player plus. Yeah, they're starting to come in off the bottom. You see, they're starting to roll in here. Yep, so, right yep, and so the order of nations would be, obviously, the environment in this case. Um, the other are resource points. We have what we call, you know, tactical currency in the game. And what the tactical currency does is it allows you to place that, so this building just cost Mike some tactical currency. Great audio, by the way. And then, uh, or he can actually use some of his, his commander abilities 
Uh, and for, the, for this demo, we actually have a couple map-specific abilities as well. So, um, and those all cost resources that you earn from playing the game. Let's see what's going on here. Another cool element that I really like about End of Nations is the fact that most RTSs have what we call a, a rock, paper, scissors you know, uh, aspect, meaning you know, unit A is good against unit B, which is good against unit C. Um, this, we're no exception, although we do put it kind of a little bit more in the player's face so they, they can see. So if Mike mouses over one of, his uh, one of his units down here, or over here, you can see this guy is good against heavy tanks, he's okay against light, and he can't shoot air, right? So the helicopter is red. Uh, and that goes, goes the same for an enemy unit. Why that's important is you may be coming up against some enemy units, you mouse over them, you realize you've got an entire fleet of, of you know, heavies, and th those guys are good against heavies, and they're light, and you're not good against light, so you just want to run away, you know? It's, or call oh, your buddy. Oh, aircraft in there, too. Okay, so those are Ragnaroks. Those are actually the tanks in the sky. Um, and their goal, they can't capture points, but they can definitely take out stuff that's trying. So, now, one of the things about this, this map that's kind of nice, and kind of, is it, are we there? I'm not, not yet, he's okay. coming. So, you know, it wouldn't be very fun if it was just, you know, just you versus, you know, the AI, unless the AI did something really brutal to mess with you, which you're about to see. Um, yeah, we're just getting into place. He's, he's, in, he's in, route, in route. So, as you can see, Mike has actually captured a couple points. It looks like the Order of Nation has captured a victory point as well. Um, but again, you, you want to try and hold those points as well as the uh, resource points so that you can do things like, you know, drop super weapons. And we're not going to do it in this demo, but two other, two other things on this map that are kind of neat. Um, that are tailored specifically for this for this map, we have two buildings that if you upgrade them, you actually gain abilities. So one of the buildings will suppress one of the super weapons that the Order of Nation can use against you. Um, we're not gonna do it because I think the super weapons look really cool. So I'm hoping we actually get, here, oh, here, here comes, comes one. Here comes. So this is a Panzerhulk. This is the big boss. So, so now your focus has kind of shifted from capturing these points to uh, so, and, and you know, this would be kind of akin to a boss encounter, right? So, so in the real world, this would require a coordinated effort from four different players. And I'm invulnerable right now too. So yeah, it, which is a good thing because this thing would be eating him for breakfast if he wasn't invulnerable. Normally, we play with four of us, and we all work together. But when we're low on guys, it's like I'll go invulnerable. So through normal gameplay, again, we've kind of expedited the process because it's a demo, but uh, you can see that while he's distracted fighting this boss, the Order of Nations has gone back and started recapping points. So all this stuff that we capped earlier is now getting taken away from us while we're over here, you know, distracted by this big, big menacing, you know, boss unit. Oh, the house just went down. So and that's the other thing. Everything in the terrain is collapsible. So as this thing's rolling through, it's going to destroy everything beautifully. And I, I want to point out two things. One, the, lo the level of detail for the effects in this game are unbelievable. Uh, the approach that we took making this game is that it's a free-to-play, but it's a AAA, world-class quality free-to-play. And I think, I mean, you can just look and see. The audio is brilliant. Um, I think we should take him out. So, let's get like a little nuke, nuke action. so Mike is actually going to drop a super weapon. This is a like a tactical nuke. All right. So what's happened is Mike dropped the nuke. It knocked a lot of the hard points off of this thing. So you notice some of the, the turrets that we're we're shooting. There's a couple that are still operational, but for the most part, it knocked some of the hard points off of off of the Panzer Hulk. Oh. And Mike, Mike just unlocked an achievement, which is cool. <laughs> I did. Wasn't scripted. That literally just, we didn't plan that. I'll drop a nuke over here, too, just to give, give another look at the nuke. Yeah, because I kind of, there we go. So it's nice big effect. It's beautiful. So. Four, now we've lost four victory points. Yeah, so while we've been over here fighting this guy, they've just been going <laughs> behind us cleaning our clocks. So I think for now, we'll go ahead and, let's go ahead and drop an orbital on Yes, sir. 
Here we go. Inbound. And he's dead. And he's dead. So the one thing that we're not actually showing you here is that there's a timer, 52 minutes and 43 seconds for this instance. What that's actually counting down to is 10 of those showing up. So it's kind of incentivizing for you to finish taking the victory points and, and capturing the rest of the map. So these guys could keep playing for another 52 minutes and probably win the match. Uh, but at this time, I'd like to open up for any questions. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> Time of release. So we're, we're currently in closed beta testing. Um, one of the things I absolutely love about our partnership as well as just the way that our, our companies work um, is that we've had two closed betas already, you know, two beta weekends, and the feedback we've gotten has been phenomenal. That being said, right now, we're 100% acting on that feedback, and open beta will be, term be determined by when we get that stuff done, but it, it should be coming soon, so. What's that? Favorite super weapon? I like the orbital strike. I, I'm not gonna lie. The EMP pulse. I don't know if we got to see one, uh, but it was one of the you know one of the one of the Panzer Hulk abilities. It's gorgeous. How much what? Command and Conquer. Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of Command and Conquer love, but a lot of Command and Conquer DNA. Right. In the there's a, uh, we have. We have uh, 25 people, you know, that uh, FF, they used to be at Westwood. Grab it, oh, Mike. sorry. Yeah, so we've got a lot of, you know, ex, ex Westwood folks from the Command and Conquer series working at Petroglyph, working on the on the project. So yeah, awesome. we have a great love for CNC and a lot of passion for CNC and a lot of our a lot of our DNA is in Command and Conquer. So yeah, there's definitely definitely some influences. How would you um, say uh, the the uh, how do you comment the evolution of the RTS genre? I mean, we we began with Doom back two thousand years ago. And Joe Bostic, his desk is right across from mine. You know, who worked uh, worked on the first very first Doom? Yeah. I mean, uh, oh, on the evolution of RTS. Yeah, where, well, what? Where, where would Doom come from? Where are we? Where are we going? Well, that's that's what we thought was. You know, we you know. Um, you know, we had been making our RTSs and everything like that, and 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 um, you know, everybody was kind of like doing these kind of minor steps in the evolution of real-time strategy, and you know, everybody, you know, and I, there's a lot of awesome real-time strategy games out there that we love. You know, we love the stuff that the other other t companies make, and and uh, hopefully they love the stuff we make. But yeah, everything was just little incremental steps, and you know, what we realized was. You know what we we were watching the way RPG was going, and I, I still love a good single player RPG. You know I love Skyrim, but you know watching what you know World of Warcraft and EverQuest and Rift and you know all these games have done, you know by you know taking RPG online and being able to play with your friends and being able to play on demand and go on these great adventures. We're like, man, RTS was just kind of starting to stagnate. You know, it was just kind of going away. Where and you know and. I gotta say, StarCraft Two, phenomenal game. I mean, it's just it's you know, the gameplay is terrific, but you know it's, it's more of the same of that we were all doing. It wasn't you know just just you know not it was everybody, and um, so our you know what we really thought was you know we thought of this idea of cooperate and conquer. You know, we were like that was like one of the kind of the cornerstones where we're like we want to be able to log in, play with our friends, you know, and have like a big living community where people can just play. You know, any time of the day, 24 hours a day, log in and have a persistence to your, your commander, too, you know, where you're, it's not just disposable. You know, you build up, you build your forces, you build a name for yourself, you build a clan, you know, and, and you, you know, you, you, that, that clan becomes known. And you just, you know, you just, you're able to just keep playing and playing and building and growing and just, you know, have that kind of big persistent experience where all of your efforts aren't, like, disposable. You know, they, they count. And, you know, and that's, that was the gold goal, you know, and we just wanted to be able to have the opportunity to play. And one of the other big things is, you know, PVP RTS, you know, is a very brutal experience. If you don't know how to play it and you jump in and start playing with people, man, you'll get owned so fast. And it's often a very humiliating experience and it actually turns a lot of people away. And so we felt, well, you know, if we can do some really great cooperative play, where you know it's not just two-player co-op, but you can get some you know big teams of co-op going against 
you know, the AIs and Comstoms and play against the order of nations, we thought that would just be absolutely awesome because when you play that, nobody loses. You know, you're not getting taunted by other people and, and stuff like that. So we just thought that would also just be a great way because somebody could come in and play the game and never have to play PvP if they don't want to. And, you know, that's like, but we still want to support great PvP for people that are diehard and love to get in there and get their names top ranked on the leaderboards and stuff and esports. You know, we, de we definitely want to give them that, too. So we're trying to give a good variety. But when we set, the, set out to make the game here, you know, we just realized we really need to make, first and foremost, a game that RTS gamers, you know, will really love. So, and as RTS players, we, you know, we're, we're in love with it. Um, imagining that Petroglyph is one of the uh, sole uh, visionaries in the RTS genre, genre um, do you imagine that the RTS genre would work on a console game or as a console game? You know, a lot of us, a lot of us have tried. I mean, we, we have tried and, 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 yeah, Halo Wars, we did Universe or, Universe War Earth Assault. We actually had it, Universe War Earth Assault is interoperable between PC and Xbox 360. You can actually play against each other over those. And one of the first games that did that. And, you know, it's just, um, you know, it's hard, you know, to be able to, to emulate some kind of a you know way to kind of like quickly access the battlefield. And I think we made some really good control advancements. We did, I thought, some great control advancements. And then EA kind of mirrored some of our control advancements with their console RTS games for CNC. And you know, I th I like I like that because it, it's a stand. You know, people are trying to evolve in a standard that works. And Halo Wars was a great game too. But I don't know. It's just it just cannot nail the PC RTS experience, you know, and I think console is a lot about the thumbstick and direct driving. You know, you like to have a single unit and you, you know, to seem to drive around it. It's just, you know, and we thought, well, maybe it's more about driving a, driving a single unit and having the rest of the units kind of follow along, you know, and do control groups and stuff. But, um, yeah, it's just, uh, but I gotta say, you know, it's just PC just feels where the heart is for real time strategy. And, you know, there's been a lot of great attempts and I think somebody's going to crack it. We, we, we're all trying, we're all thinking about it, we're always talking about it, and, and somebody's going to do it. But, but for right now, we'll just like, uh, you know, we're, we're just delighted this is on, you know, on PC. We and love what, to. With our technical boundaries, where do you think we'll end up nations going? What, what is the last hardcore technical feature you would implement instantly if you would have free, no technological boundaries? God, I think we would just go even uh, just bigger you know even larger scale battles you know we go we go up to 28 players versus 28 right now and you know in the past you know online rts of this kind of scale you know with you know the number of units and how many players you know wasn't even you know i mean even possible you know nexon did a phenomenal job with shattered galaxy you know that was a great great first step and you know that really really was you know awesome but you know now that with bandwidth getting faster and processors getting faster and 64-bit operating systems and you know we're you know connection speeds now are just amazing compared to two years ago like we our servers for this are hosted in dallas right now and our european community is playing connected to dallas and they're doing great and everybody's nobody's complaining about lag and and low you know slow times and stuff so i think technology has really gotten us there so i think it's just a matter of scale i think you know how many more people can we fit on the same server playing the same game world you know because there are you know you know boundaries to, to you know how much ram we have and, and all that stuff so i think just just bigger bigger world and and uh and then larger even larger you know we're going to push for pushing past that 56 player battle as well you know we want it we want to push past that so i think it's just yeah just just make it bigger and um you know but we got to retain the fun too just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do it it's got to be fun first and foremost